do work forever and ever for you, Lord Jesus. Yes, we pray for all the, the preachers, life. teachers, the bishops, the missionaries, the oneness doctrine, Sunday school teachers, yes, the evangelists, Lord, Lord yes, that you bless them all, Lord. Bring peace in the life, Lord, and help them to save souls, Lord, and use them yes, for your glory, Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, a special we way, Lord, we pray, Lord, for Israel and Jerusalem, Lord. Yes, Lord, as they are your country, Lord. Yeah. You keep them safe. Your protect the borders. Are. Protect the governments, yeah. Lord, and the leaders over there, Lord. Has it's just a little clip of a 14-year-old young man who is praying for us and his mother. Um whenever they send that to me, they send me these different clips and stuff. It brings me to tears to, uh, to know that uh, these precious people are praying for us. We're praying for them. Amen. We're praying for them. We're covering them. Uh, they have different needs in their family um, and, and their church, and, their, and, and we're praying for them. We're praying for healing. Um, uh, our sister over there, she's uh, she's been sick. Um, she was sick for a while, then then she got better and sent us a nice testimony. And of course, we we always know as soon as you send out a testimony, the devil's going to come and attack you again. That's just how it is. He tries to steal your testimony away, but but we're going to continue praying. Amen. Amen. That uh, that that testimony uh, gets locked down in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, and she is strengthened and blessed and. And everything, and go, oh, hallelujah. It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. But let's pray for uh, this dear lady. I don't know her name. Um, it, it's a grandmother of, uh, it's Brandon's grandma. Uh, Sister Casey knows Brandon real well. Brandon's been to church here several times. Uh, we want to pray for Brandon's grandmother right now. And we want to pray for the DeCruz family. So would you do that with me right now in the name of Jesus? Father, you have prepared us to be a sanctuary. We prayed it. We sang it, God. Hallelujah. Your spirit has moved in here and moved among us, Lord. Hallelujah. And tonight, Lord Jesus, we come to you, oh God. Brandon's grandmother fell, Lord. God, not pray, Lord Jesus, that you would strengthen her, that you would bring healing to her, God, that you would touch her. She's out of town. Brandon is not in, in where she is. Oh God, and I pray that you touch him and you, and you comfort him and his mom, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would heal his grandmother. Father, she she needs strength and she needs to have her, 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 her body strengthened again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for you to cover her and to heal in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Remove pain, oh God. Uh, replace the strength, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. We pray for Liz de Cruz, for her son Elijah, for her husband Neil, God, for the congregation there in Karachi, Pakistan, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the Spirit of the Lord to touch them, for the hand of God to rest upon them, for the name of Jesus, oh God, to strengthen them and to, and to bolster them together, God. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord Jesus, for their healing. And we pray, oh God, for the blessings of the Lord to, to pile on them abundantly, for the mercies of God. God, for everything that they have need of, Lord Jesus. We call on your name, O oh God, and we ask you, Lord Jesus, to strengthen them and to heal them, deliver them. O oh God, bless them. Pile, oh God, pile upon them abundance, Lord Jesus, for them to be a blessing to their church, O oh God, for their church, O oh God, to reach souls, O oh God, in that city of, of 20 million people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And we ask, O oh God, for your holy word to touch us tonight. We need you. We God, God, we need your spirit to lead us and guide us in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is so good. He's so good. Praise God. The old kid's song said, Our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing, nothing that he cannot do. Glory to God. 
I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here before you're seated. Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 through 15, it says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where, out, where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Hmm. I want to preach this thought. It's a question. How far can you see? How far can you see? Father, bless it, Lord Jesus. We ask for your blessings upon us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you turn around? Would you ask your neighbor, how far can you see? And then you can please have a seat. Relax. Relax. You've been standing for a long time. I'll sacrifice myself and I'll stand a little longer. I know you really feel sorry for me. There's only a few days left of January. Can you believe it? There's only a few days left of January. Wasn't it just Christmas? Wasn't it just Thanksgiving? Wasn't it just New Year's last year? It just seems like everything's going so quick. Somebody said the other day, they said, the, the clock runs faster. It really doesn't. My clock's running faster, but the clock doesn't run faster. But uh, so we've got, uh, we, we've got just a few days left. Of, of fasting that's on the schedule. And uh, if you feel the need to, to keep going, please do so. Don't, don't wait for the church to say, oh, I think maybe let's, let's only fast when the church says let's fast. Let's um, make, it, make it something that is personal and, uh, and, and revival to you. Amen? Uh, there, there are a lot of conditions to vision. A lot of conditions to vision. Uh, uh, they, they commonly occur in the flesh, um, and, and which they also have a, a specific parallel in the church. Really, there's different conditions. Um, there's there's amblyopia. Amblo Anybody ever heard of that? Amblo amblyopia. I, I don't know if I'm going to say these right at all, um, but it's sometimes called lazy eye or wandering eye. Affects about 3% of the population. There's ARMD. Now, I can say that one. That one's easy. That's actually English. Age-related macular degeneration. Now, this is the leading cause of blindness. Anybody ever heard of that one? How about cataracts? A lot of people have heard of cataracts before. Uh, this caused by the lens of the eye becoming cloudy or hazy. And then there's one that I, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this. Or, strabimus, strab, strabismus, strabismus, is that right? You, all you uh, doctors of <clears throat> eye-related situations. This is simply something that is your cross-eyed. Scarlet can make herself strabismus. She can make herself cross-eyed. But this is, a, uh, this is an issue where you don't make yourself cross-eyed. You're, you're cross-eyed or you have a misalignment, and that, that results in double vision. Then there's diabetic retinopathy. That's a vision condition caused by, by an outside source, right, from diabetes. And then, there's, and then there's one called hyperopia. Any far-sighted people here? I'm not anywhere close to done. Hyperopia. Anybody farsighted? That's the T 
technical term for being farsighted. It's easily outgrown um, when you're young, but then it also comes back when you get a little older again. It affects 25% of the population. And then there's presbyopia. That's normal farsighted caused by aging and uh, mostly over 40 years old. Then there's glaucoma. And that, this is a vision condition caused by pressure. It's the second leading cause of blindness, glaucoma. Now, all these conditions could uh, affect you at one time or another and, and pros, most possibly will affect you at some time in your life. But I want to address the most common condition of vision, and that is myopia. Most people have heard of being nearsighted, but never knew that it's called myopia. Now, myopia simply defines, says it's a condition in which the visual images come to a focus in front of the retina of the eye because of defects in the refractive media of the eye of abnormal length of the eyeball resulting especially in defective vision of distant objects. Why don't we just say it's nearsighted? That's a whole lot easier, right? Nearsighted. It means that I don't see too much further in front of my nose means that I can, I, I can see things uh, um, a, a little ways away, but I can't really see things up close here. And, and so near, nearsightedness, it's, a, it, it's an amazing thing. Or, or actually, you can't see things far away, but you can see things up close. And, and so nearsighted, it's, it's an amazing thing. It, it affects the, the highest amount of people. This myopia, it affects the most, most people um, will, in, will uh, have nearsightedness at some point in their life. Now, that's physically. Spiritually, every single human being is going to be affected by nearsightedness at some point in their life. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm going to talk about a, a, a little bit more of a spiritual nearsightedness. How far can you see? Abram was, was told to, to go on up to this hill here in, in, in Bethel. And, and he was told, uh, now, now look north and, and look south and, and look east and look west. And you see everything, Abram? You, can you see everything that you can see? It's yours. Given it to you. It's yours. Everything that you can see. All the land that thou seest, to thee will I give it. Now Peter, he, he was a servant of the apostle of Jesus Christ. And in, in, in 2 Peter, he says, To, the, to them that, that have obtained like precious faith uh, with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Peter, Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. But by, by these, ye might be partaker of the divine nature. <laughs> having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. Oh, praise God. I like this part. Add to your faith. Add virtue. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And to virtue, add a little knowledge. Praise God, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Oh, no. 
and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. God, what, what, what Peter is trying to tell us here, he's, what he's trying to tell the church here, what he's trying to tell the born again, what he's trying to tell us that have, that have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that have been filled with the Spirit of God, that there are some things we have to ask in our lives. There are some things that, that we, we can't just get in the church and just sit and, and, and then not, not add anything and not do anything. We've got to start adding some stuff so we are not, so we don't end up blind. There's an inherent danger in nearsightedness. It creates a limited field of vision. I, I, I became nearsighted when I was fifth grade. I started started realizing, man, I can't see much. Can't see, can't see what's on the board. Now, now most kids today, they don't even know what a board is. <clears throat> Blackboard, anybody, anybody remember those? Uh, with chalk and erasers and and you got to you got to go up and erase them, and then you got to get to smack the eraser and clean it all out and stuff. They don't have anything. They, they don't have anything like that today. You got all these digital things that They're kind of cool, but man, you need to have chalk in your eyes. You need to have a cloud of chalk in your when when you're when you're in the classroom. You get, you got you, you got to go up and scratch the chalkboard and drive everybody crazy. I mean, it's just oh yeah, scratch my iPad. Just doesn't have the same effect, does it? Kids today are so wimpy. They need to have something that crawls up their back and makes their hair fall out. But nearsighted, it creates this limited field of vision, resulting in an attitude of smallness. When you're limited to what you can see, you start believing in only what you can see clearly. You have an attitude of smallness. You have, I can only see, I can only see so far. So that's, that's my world. That's, that's my little bubble. That's all I can see. And it, it shrinks the borders of our world down to the end of our nose and perhaps maybe to, to the end of your arms at the most. But, but, but now all of a sudden we, 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 we only see what we can reach out to. But, but after that, we're blind. After that, the life gets fuzzy. After that, everything gets too hazy. After that, everything gets too fuzzy. And, and I can't see a future and I can't see, I, I can't see my children and growing and I can't see can't see down the road a little ways I can't see owning anything I can't see growing anything because because my world has become so small because my problem is larger than my God and all we can see is the problem we can't see the solution and when we get to a place where all we see is the problem because the problem consumes our field of vision and we can't see the solution because that's a little deeper into the word of God and that's a little deeper into an altar and that's a little deeper in prayer and that's a little deeper in worship because we can't see past our problem. We are struggling and we are caught up in our problem and the Lord is trying to break that open and he's trying to give you a vision that goes beyond your problem Jesus hallelujah. hallelujah thank God that Abram didn't suffer from nearsightedness he could have died standing on the same stone that he received that promise if he suffered from nearsightedness if he would have looked north and he would have looked south and he would have looked east and he would have looked west and all it was was just a little four foot section that he was standing on he could have died right there and don't you die in your problem live in salvation decision that Lot and Abram took at Bethel, it was the house of God. It was the house of God. They were gonna, they were gonna look east and west and north and south, and and they saw all the land before them. 
And you realize that you're in that, you were in that field of vision of him. Better yet, you're in the Lord's field of vision. You were in the Lord's field of vision. Praise God. Peter understood there were some conditions that, that, that could affect the church, and he, he wrote about it. And he, he, how did Peter come to understand that it could happen? How did Peter understand that it could happen? In, in, in verse 39 of Acts chapter 2, he said, For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And then chapter 10, verses 9 through 17, and I don't know if I'll read it all, but on the morrow, as they went their way, their, uh, went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and, and saw heaven opened up and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise Peter kill and eat but Peter said no 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 not so Lord for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice spake unto him again the second time what God hath cleansed that call not thou uncommon or common that which was that was done through this was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubled uh, or doubted in himself what this vision uh, which he had seen should mean, behold the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Oh hallelujah. Could you imagine? Peter, he, he made that declaration uh, in, in verse 39 on the day of Pentecost. He made that declaration. For unto you the promise is unto you and to your children. And as many as are far off. Could you imagine if Peter would have forgotten that? He almost did. He almost said, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything unclean. Wait a minute, pal. Don't call that which I've cleansed common. Peter remembered. You, you, you inspired me to preach something back at Pentecost, Lord, that you were calling our children. You were calling all that are afar off. You're telling me the promise is unto all of us. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you for clearing up my vision a little bit. Anybody ever gotten a little cloudy in your vision? Thank you for clearing up my vision a little bit. Thank you for helping me out. There's a reason that Peter fell into that trance. Amen? There's a reason for it. He started praying. There's a reason God took him to that place in the spirit and gave him that vision in the spirit because Peter needed his vision to be cleared up. Do we have anything that we need our vision cleared up? Do we, need, do we have any area in our life that we can't see the promise of God clearly anymore? That we just can't see what God is doing clearly anymore? Do we have any areas in life that we need God to maybe put us in a little bit of a trance, carry us somewhere in the spirit? We're going to have an opportunity to pray at the end of this message, and I'm asking God to put us in the spirit. Take us there, Lord. Take us there. Take us to a place that, that is far away from here, far away from our problems, far away from our struggles, far away from the things that have clawed their way into our lives. Take me there, Jesus. Take me there. Don't let me leave here like I came into this place. Don't let me carry the same burden out that I carried in. Don't let me carry the same struggle out that I carried in. We have an altar church and you can dump the baggage at it. Oh, hallelujah.
Oh, hallelujah. But the question is, how far can you see? Can you see the altar? Sometimes I question, maybe, maybe we're sitting in church and we can't see the altar. It's there. Other people, are, other people are approaching something, but they fade out. Because my, because my ugly problem is so much bigger. As people, uh, people approach the altar, I don't know really for sure where they're going, but they, they just kind of fade out of my view. Let me, let me just ask you this. You might need somebody to take you by the hand tonight and carry you through the fog and into the light. You may just need that, amen? Thank God that Isaiah didn't suffer from nearsightedness. What we, we see in Isaiah 9, uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. Zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. <laughs> and further down, after, after Isaiah uh, went through so many different things, further down in chapter 60, he said, I, uh, oh, he says, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all oh, they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed by thy side. And then, then, then shalt thou see and flow together. And that heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they that from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be to gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar and I will glorify the house with of my glory. Oh praise God. Uh, Isaiah is talking about a God that's coming a savior that's coming, a king that's coming and then he goes on later on a whole 60 chapters pretty much later and he starts to say God is going to bring his glory and God has brought his glory to us. Oh, hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord and shout. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Elisha's servant was nearsighted. Hmm. But Elisha, he knew it could be corrected. All it needed was a touch of God's hand. The servant wasn't totally blind. He just had a little eye trouble. In 2 Kings chapter 6, and when the servant of the man of God had risen early and gone forth, behold, and host and compass the city both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? He answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they which be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Ha! Sometimes we just have to look at one another. When we're all down in the dumps and we're in the mully grubs and we're having a bad day, we just have to say, Lord, open their eyes. Open their eyes. Let them see. Let them see the angelic host. Let them see the power of God. Let them see the flaming sword that's chasing back all the devils and everything. Let them see, oh God, because there's going to be times in your life all you can see is the evil spirits. But I guarantee you, 
The Bible tells us where sin abounds, where you can just might well say where the devils are, grace does much more abound. So are the angels of God. You're still breathing because there's angels of God that have protected you. Oh, hallelujah! Lord, open their eyes. Open their eyes. Let them see the power of God. Let them see the mountains blowing up with a flaming sword that's cutting down all the evil and all the obstacles. When's the last time you said, God, get that obstacle out of my way. God, get that hindrance out of my path. Lord Jesus, I don't need to be jumping over that hurdle. Jesus was not nearsighted. Aren't you glad? Ten, the ten lepers were afar off in Luke chapter 17. It says, and, 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 as, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten lepers. Ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master. Have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go. Show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They, they were afar off. They were afar off. Church, you and I have been afar off. We've been afar off. We've been a little ways away. But Jesus Christ is not nearsighted. He can see us when we're afar off. He knows when we're afar off. He has his eyes on us when we're afar off. And we call on his name when we're afar off. He always, he, he always tells us, get to church. Anybody ever heard that from the Lord? Besides me? Have you ever heard that from the Lord? I'll get text messages sometimes in the middle of the night. Oh, I need to be in church. Oh, you're afar off and Jesus is seeing you. And I say, yes, you do. We're here. Jesus is here. You know, it, it's, it's amazing to me that when we are far off, the Lord still tells us, get to my house. Get among my people. You need the prayers of the saints. You need the fellowship with the saints. You need to worship in the sanctuary. You need to be in the house of God. It happens. It happens when we're, clo when we're close. It's just our lifestyle. We're just, there's nothing going to get in our way. When we're close to God, there's nothing going to get in our way. It's just, uh, hey, it's church time. We're in church. But when we're afar off, it seems like a lot of things have a chance to get in our way. We're nearsighted, but Jesus isn't. We're laying there. We're tormented by things that are going on in our lives. And Jesus says, you need to be in my house. And we're like, yeah. What's going on, Lord? I don't feel the peace. And I don't feel the strength because you need to be in my house. I don't feel your spirit, but you need to be in my house. You ever notice that David, David said, if I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I can't go anywhere. I can't go anywhere without him. Be in there. The demoniac and, get, and, and Gadara um, in, in Mark chapter 5. We're, gonna, we're not going to read it. But uh, the demoniac and Gadara, he, he understood. They, the, uh, those, those demons knew, hey, hey uh, um, um, there's, there's some pigs close. Let's, let, can you send us into the pigs? They're close by. They're close by. You, you see, the devil always wants to get close. He wants to get in the closest thing he can because the devil can't see very far. So he just says, hey, there's the pigs over there. They're, they're nice and close. Can I just get into the pigs? The prodigal's father was not nearsighted. Praise God for that. Aren't you happy for that? In Luke chapter 15, uh, he says, and he arose and came to his father. But, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. <laughs> yeah. 
when I was ways out, my father saw me. He was yet a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let let us eat and be merry. Church, would you stand with me right now? Would you lift up your hands and would you thank the Father of all heaven and earth that he saw you a great way off and came running? Jesus! 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 Thank you, Jesus, that you saw me when I was so far away. And you came running to me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord, would you, just for a moment. Just give the Lord a little praise and a little adoration. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now turn to one another and ask, can you see a little farther yet? Can you see a little farther yet? And go ahead and sit for a little longer. There's Exodus chapter 14 says this. It says, Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Somebody ought to sing it. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Now how big is God? People have been asking that question, I believe, probably for... For many millennia, how big is God? You know, we've, we have carved images of all sizes, all sizes, all shapes, all forms, all imaginations. We've carved images, and yet nobody has ever captured the size of God. Because God fills all space with proper vision. How far can we see and still see God's provision? <laughs> psalm 139, it's, just, it's such a wonderful psalm. Oh Lord, thou search me and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought far off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, there it is, church. Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Hmm. 
substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect in thy book, all my members were written, which is con in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. Oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And uh, am I not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Aren't you glad that David wasn't nearsighted? Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. That's Romans 11, Ephesians 3. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, in this grace is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. You see, we have, we, we have a God. We have a God who is not nearsighted. He doesn't have a vision problem. He has perfect vision. He can see us in the heights. He can see us in the depths. He can see us in the dark crevices. He can see us in the gaping caves. He can see us when we're, when we're standing out in the light. He can see us when we're buried in the fog. Our God can see everything. We may not be able to see past our nose. We may be struggling with the thoughts of tomorrow. It, it could be just tomorrow could be a heavy burden to some of us. It could be something that I'm, I'm just not looking forward to tomorrow. Anybody ever said that? A lot of people have said that. A lot of people have said that every, every week to me. It seems like somebody says, I'm just really not looking forward to tomorrow. And I always ask, well, what's happening tomorrow? Some people say, well, I have to go to the doctor and I've, got, I, I, I've had tests run and I, I need to go hear the report or some people say I've got I've got issues that I, I, I've got to go to court or I've got to talk to the police and and and, and some people are like well I, I, I've got a bill to pay and I have absolutely no money to pay it with and and I, I, my, my my lights could get cut off tomorrow my electricity everything I, I've so many people have said I'm just not looking forward to tomorrow church that should never be you and I because tomorrow for you and I is filled with promise. Filled with pro Are there problems? Yeah. Pfft. Think about your problems. Ne put your problems, however big they are, your big old monsters, put them right alongside Jesus Christ and watch them dissolve. Watch them just go away. Put your struggles, put your heartaches, put your dilemmas, put your, put your sickness and your healing. Put it all right next to Jesus and watch it just kind of dissolve away. Well, it's still there. Mm-hmm. But your perspective can change. Question is, can you see a little farther yet? Can anybody see the altar? Can anybody see this altar? Would you stand? Now, I don't know who cannot see the altar. But I'm going to ask everybody take somebody by the hand. Don't ask them, can you see the altar? 
Don't ask him, is it, is it too far away? Don't ask him, is it something that you want to go to tonight? Just, if, if everybody just, just take somebody by the hand and just walk through the fog of all of your struggle, all of your problems, all of your pain, and just come break through to the altar. Would you do that tonight? Just, just reach over somebody. Just take them by the hand. Don't ask. We're all here. We're all in Jesus. Just come and just come to the altar. And now just begin to lay down your burdens. Just begin to unload some of the baggage. Just begin to, to, to shed some of, that, some of that burden off of you. Begin to, begin to present it to the Lord. Present, begin to just, just offer it to him. Father, this is, th this is it, Lord. This is who I am. This is what's going on. This is, this is what, what, is, what is, I'm struggling with. This is what's ugly in my life. This is what has uh, got me confused. This is, what is, uh, this, this is what is attacking me. This is what's stealing my peace. This is what's robbing me of joy. This is what is holding me back. This is what is tripping me up. This is what is an obstacle, and this is what is a hurdle, and this is what is a hindrance, and, and Lord Jesus, and, and, and this is what's causing my ears to be a little clogged to your voice, and, and, and everything's dull, and, and this is what's causing my vision, God, to be so nearsighted. This is what's causing me to not be able to see very far. This is it, Lord Jesus, and give that to him right now. Give that to him. It could be a health problem. It could be a family member. It could be anything. It could be, it could be a sin problem. It, it could be anything. Just offer it to him tonight. Say, here it is, Lord. Here it is. I got to get it off of me and I got to get it out of me. And I got I to gotta lay it before you. Come on, church. You 